online worship experience. We are so glad you have joined us. As we head into the countdown, say hello to somebody, tell us where you're joining from, and hey, don't forget to share with your friends and loved ones. After the countdown, we're gonna go into a time of worship and the word. Majestic is your name, there's no other God like you. How amazing, how amazing is your grace, there's no other God like you, like you. Lord, you pray. God Almighty, God what a glory, sing praises to you, oh, yeah. sing praises to you, majesty, your majesty, majesty, we glorify your holy name, Lord, as long as we breathe. Majestic is your name. There's no other God like you. How amazing is your grace. There's no other God like you. Lord, you reign. Your Every way, God Almighty, God, Lord of glory, we sing praises to you. Oh, we sing praises to you. Majesty, Your Majesty, Majesty, we glorify, we glorify Your holy, your holy name, name, Lord. As long as we pray. We breathe. For as long as we breathe, we proclaim, Lord, you will keep, you reign, you reign forevermore. Oh, we love you, we love you, we adore you, we declare there is none, nobody else but you.
as long as we breathe, we proclaim, Lord, you reign, till you reign, Lord, majesty, majesty, we glorify your holy name, as long as we breathe.
Pastor Linda here from E3 Church. I am so blessed to be joining you today and bringing the word this morning. I am just um, uh, excited this morning, excited because uh, we are just entering into a new season, winter on our end here, depending on where you are. But here in the United States, winter is, we are about to say goodbye to winter and spring is coming forth and uh, you know spring is just uh, a season where we can celebrate newness where we can celebrate something new something different and so i am blessed that you are joining us wherever you're joining us from you know whether here in the united states you're in africa in europe wherever you are you know uh whether you are at home at work um you know wherever you are you are here and i am blessed that you have joined us this day i mean you could have decided to be anywhere else but you are here and so we are blessed we are so glad that you are here so today we are going to be starting a new series that is going to lead us up to easter so easter is coming up very soon 
and we are excited about that. So our new series is titled Unleashing Hope, okay? Unleashing Hope. So we are in a season this year is we have been unleashed to new levels. And so I believe that the Lord is pushing us even further in that unleashing that now he wants to use us to unleash something into the world, right? He wants to use us to unleash something into the world because he's unleashed us into something good. He wants to use us. And so I believe that the next few sermons you want to be a part of them because we are going to be looking at unleashing hope hope in the states that we are in in the in the situations that we are in because Jesus is all about hope and so today my sermon is going to be just very simple the, the series is unleashing hope and the sermon today is no fear okay no fear so I want us to turn our Bibles to um, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, okay? 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 said, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Okay, so let's just pray before we get into this word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, God. We thank you, mighty God, for what you are doing in our lives. We thank you for this new season that you have unleashed us to new levels. And now, mighty God, we are asking you that, Lord, you use us, oh God, in the world that we are living in today, that we will be hope dealers, oh God, that we will extend hope. The hope that you have given us, we will extend it to others. And so, Father, even as we get into the word today, Father, I ask you that you use me, use my lips, oh mighty God, to be a blessing to those that are listening, to those that are joining us today in the name of of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So like I said, I'm Pastor Linda from E3 Church here in Columbia, Maryland, and we are looking at uh, a new series that we have we are starting today, Unleashing Hope. Unleashing Hope. And the sermon, the, ser the the message that I have for us today is no fear. No fear. Our scripture has been is 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 2, verse 7. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. You know, uh, Timothy is such an interesting book. And uh, when I was looking through it, reading through it, I realized that, you know, uh, Timothy, just like every other book that I have been reading, you know, so far, Hebrews, uh, Thessalonians, it really, really so resonates to the time, the times that we are living in today. But, you know, just a little bit about Timothy. So Timothy was a spiritual son of Paul. And Paul was the one who wrote, you know, this uh, uh, book, 2 uh, Timothy and 1 Timothy as well. So he was a son, a spiritual son to the apostle Paul. And Paul was writing to Timothy to encourage him. Okay, so he was writing to him to encourage him. But here's the, the, the thing that I, 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 I found very interesting and very profound is that you know, when Paul was writing this uh, letter to Timothy, he was actually in prison. It was uh, his second imprisonment, okay? So he was in prison, and just after writing this letter, he was condemned and actually executed. So, you know, he knew what was happening, and he knew what was about to happen. But can you imagine even with the immense and intense pressure that he was feeling, he was still able to encourage his spiritual son. He was still able to leave something, you know, for his spiritual son to be able to run with and to walk with. And so, you know, right after that, you know, he was right after writing as uh, uh, Second Timothy, he was 
uh, condemned and he was executed. So, so you see and, uh, and find uh, a sense of, you know, urgency in Paul's letter. He needed this letter to go out as soon as possible because he knew any time he was going to be dead. And so you find that there was that urgency. But then there is also the, the, the message of hope that he was trying to give, uh, you know, Timothy. And I find that to be very, very encouraging, especially in the times and the seasons that we are living in and that we are, you know, uh, coming from 2020, 2021. It's just been uh, a, a season, you know, that's a strange, strange season, okay? But with all that was going on in Paul's life and also in, uh, in the life of the church at that time, uh, it, it, it just wasn't easy. It just wasn't easy. And it was a time when fear was creeping in, not only creeping in, uh, uh, you know, to Timothy, but into the church. It was an uncertain time. And I don't know whether I can even uh, paint a picture for you of how uh, it was so gloomy. The church's leader, the one that they looked to, the one who had planted so many churches was in prison. Okay, he was in prison and he was soon to be executed. So I just want you to sense how Paul was feeling, how Paul was. At that moment, what state was he in? Okay? And what state was the church in? But look at the message that he brought out. To me, that just tells me we have no excuse. We definitely do not have an excuse to be hope dealers in the season and the time that we are in. The world out there needs to be looking at the church to see what hope is all about. To see that, you know, God is good. He's good all the time. Okay? We have no excuse. We have no excuse. Here's the thing. The enemy wants to sow fear. Okay? That's what he did even then. And even today, he wants to sow fear. Because he knows that when fear creeps in, faith is out of the door. But guess what? The whole essence of Christianity is faith. Not faith in, in something, but faith in God. And so we want to make sure that we align ourselves with God and not align ourselves with the fear that the enemy wants to sow in us. Amen. We have no excuse. So let's learn a few things from Paul as he encouraged Timothy, okay? So we're going to go back to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Why should we be bold? That's the question that I can ask right now. Why should we be bold in today's world, in this COVID season or time? with all the uncertainties that are around us. Why should we be bold? Why should we be bold in using the gifts that God has given us? And so that's the exact question that, you know, was, was presented to Timothy and the church at that time. And there was almost like, you know, what, why should you be bold? Why should you not fear? Why? Why? I'll tell you the reason why. Because God has given us a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. The Bible says he has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but he has given us a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline, or a sound mind, okay? So let's break it down. Let's break down this, this verse. So three things that we are going to learn today. Just three things and then I'll be done. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking like, you know, Pastor Lisulo, okay? And so you expect some nuggets. I might not say nuggets, but get some nuggets here, okay? So three things and then we will be done. 
Number one, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Okay? God has not given us a spirit of fear. What did Paul see? Paul must have seen or sensed some kind of timidity or fear in Timothy. And he knew that he needed to counter-react this thing. Okay? So, he wanted Timothy to know that that spirit of fear, that timidity was not from God. And that's the same word for us today. God has not given us a spirit of fear. He has not given us a spirit of fear. We, we all face different situations, right? We all face different situations. Different situations that where we, we can be afraid, we can be timid. I know a lot of people who are afraid of, of speaking uh, before people. Okay, that's, they actually say that's one of the, the number one fears of, a, of, a, of, of most people is to speak in front of people. So we all have it, okay? Others have, uh, 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 you know, are afraid of, of confrontation, you, you know, just being confronted or confronting someone or confronting something. Uh, we might be afraid, okay? Some people are afraid of that. What I am just saying is that every one of us, whatever that fear is, whatever that timidity is, we all face it. We all face it. But the first step in dealing with fear is to understand that fear is not from God. Fear is not from God. Okay, he hasn't given it to us. That's what the Bible says in, in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear. It is not from him. And because it is not from him, I'm not going to embrace it. You should not embrace fear. You should not be timid. You should not embrace fear or timidity at all. Whatever it is, whether it is a personality it might be a personality, yes, but this is how I am. No, 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 no. But if, if hope needs to go out there, God needs us. He wants to use us to deal hope out there. There's too much fear out there. We are the ones that God can use. So even if it is a personality, God can use it. If you can just tell yourself this fear is not from God. And I will not accept it. The fear might not just be personality. Maybe it's demonic. Well, you've got the authority to trample on that fear and speak to it and tell it to go in the name of Jesus. Why? Because God has not given us a spirit of fear. He has not given us a spirit of fear. So child of God, don't be afraid. Number two, so number one, God has not given us a spirit of fear, okay? It's not from him. That's not what he deals with. God is in the business of dealing with hope, not fear, okay? Number two, the second step in, in dealing with, with, with fear is to understand what God has given us, okay? So first of all, you know that God has not given us a spirit of fear. The second thing is what has he given us? Understand what God has given you and I. What has God given us? Okay. First of all, he has given us the spirit of power. He's given us the spirit of love. He's given us self-discipline or a sound mind. Okay. What does that mean? Let's break it down. The spirit of power. When we do his word, when we proclaim his word, we represent his kingdom. And here's what happens. We have all of God's power supporting us. When we are doing his will, his kingdom business, 
when we are dealing with what he is concerned about, guess what? All of his power is supporting us, okay? So we are safe in his hands. You don't need to be afraid. If you are dealing or doing what God has called you to do, you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid, okay? Understand what God has given you. You know God has not given you fear. You know it. Now understand what he has given you. He has given you the spirit of power. That means the whole of heaven is backing you. The whole of heaven is backing what you are doing. Wow, what, is, what an awesome thing to know. God has, not, has given us not only the spirit of power, but of love. Okay? He has given us love, the spirit of love. So it's not just about the power that he has given us, you know, because, you know, sometimes, you know, power can get to your head. But he's also balanced it and given us love. He's given us love. So we are not just about power. I've got power. I've got authority. No, 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 no. You have love. What do you love? Who do you love? Loving God and loving others. Okay. Now, you know, sometimes it can be very simple to love God. You know, you don't see him, you know, you feel something, you know, you listen to a song and it feels good, you know, and, uh, you, you know, I love God, but do you love people? Because this love does not just end on God. This love means loving others. It means serving also, okay? Loving others and serving them. You know, the night that Jesus uh, was betrayed and, you know, just before he was betrayed, he had that, you know, the, the Lord's Supper. And the Bible says that, you know, he knew, he knew all things that God had given him, all things in his hands. He knew that, okay? He knew that. But what did he do? He stooped down and washed the disciples' feet. So now that you know that God has not given you the spirit of fear, now that you know that God has given you the spirit of power, are you just going to stay in power or are you going to use that power, that authority to love and serve others? You know, during this, this COVID, you know, time, you know, there's been lockdown, you know, people are locked up and, you know, of course now things are opening up a little bit and all, but a lot of people are suffering, are hurting. Let me just ask you, what, what, what have you done in this season to help somebody else apart from yourself? What have you done? Who have you helped? Who have you loved on? Who have you extended this love and hope to? Or have you just been stuck in your world? How many people have you spoken to and led to Jesus? How many? That's what the spirit of love does. That's the reason why, listen guys, listen. You cannot live in fear. There is a world out there that needs Jesus. There is a world that out there that is dependent on you getting out there and being the light. Whatever platform the Lord has given you, are you using it at your job? Are you using it at school? Are you using it when you go to the store? Are you using it? Are you using whatever platform God has given you? And I'm not just talking about you just, you know, saying some stuff. No, 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 no. Are you doing? Are you showing love by doing? Are you showing love by doing? So God has given us a spirit of love. He's given us a spirit of power, but he's given us a spirit of love. The other thing that he has given us is self-discipline or a sound mind. Self-discipline. The ancient uh, Greek word, you know, for that uh, word here, you know, had the idea of calm, 
it had the idea of self-control a self-controlled mind uh in contrast to to the panic confusion that is going on around this is what god is saying you have a sound mind he's given it to you that means when there is chaos you're not jo joining that bandwagon of chaos you are a hope dealer i am a hope dealer I'm not going to deal with negativity. No, I'm going to bring hope every place I go. Every place I go, I want to bring hope. He's given us self-discipline. Are you disciplining yourself where you can be able to uh, 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 close off the panic and the confusion that is around you and be able to tune in to what God is doing? Let me tell you, God is about peace, all right? God is about peace. And, and let me tell you something right here. Peace does not mean there's no noise around, okay? Peace is a state of the mind. Peace is, the st is a state of the mind. Just think about Jesus in that boat with the disciples. What happened there? The storm was raging. The disciples were fearful. They were afraid. They were screaming, clamoring here and there. What was Jesus doing? Sleeping. Peace is a state. So, so don't run around with the world. Okay? Let's not run. If you are a Christian and you are listening to this message, do not run around with the world. There's too much confusion out there. Be a hope dealer. You have self-discipline. That means you can be able to create peace and calm. Because God has already given it to you. Remember, the scripture says he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and self-discipline. A sound mind. That's what he has given us. Number three. We don't need to accept what God has not given us. We don't need to accept what God has not given us. God has not given us a spirit of fear. We don't need to accept fear, okay? So, humbly, we are to receive the power the love, and the sound mind. Humbly, we are to receive it, to walk in it, because that's what he has given us. That's a promise for his children. Paul decided to write to Timothy. Because why? Why? Because boldness matters, child of God. Boldness matters. If you've been afraid to speak out, speak about something, maybe at, at work or at school, somewhere. If you've been fearful to just speak out on behalf of God, let me tell you, boldness matters. Okay? Boldness matters. We can't fulfill God's purpose for our life without being bold. We can't. God's purpose is for more than just, you know, living a life of entertainment, you know, making money, going to work, make money. And it, 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 it's more than that, guys. It's more than that. Okay. There's more to life than that. What does he want us to do? He wants us to use our gifts to touch the world, to touch a hurting world. That's the reason why we cannot keep quiet. We cannot be silent. We can't be stuck. We can't be stuck. No, 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 no. We cannot be stuck. There is a world out there that needs to see what hope is. That needs to hear what hope is. God wants to use you. Fear and timidity will keep us 
from using the gifts of God. That's the reason why we need fear out. We need timidity out so that we can extend the message of hope. We are hope dealers. We are called to unleash hope into this world. What are you doing with the hope that God has given you? What are you doing with it? So I don't want to end this service without uh, inviting somebody out there. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this might be your opportunity. You know, there is hope for you. That's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus died. And so I want to pray with you. Just pray with me this simple prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I've heard your word come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. I need you, Jesus. Save me. Wash me with your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to go ahead and, you know, there's a link in the comments. Fill out that digital connect card and let us know that you gave your life to Jesus. We would love to connect with you. For the rest of us, listen, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's go out there and be the hope dealers that God wants us to be. Have a great rest of the day and a very, very blessed week. There's an uphold of abundance and you doors have been all Of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is He. Oh, He. The glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is He. Oh, He. There's an overflow. Abundance of faith.
Powerful service. It is so good to see each one of you. Hey, if this is your first time, we would love to hear from you. So please fill out a digital connect card. You find the link in the comments. I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, to follow us on Facebook, and to share with your friends and loved ones. E3 Kids, join us today on YouTube at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey, everybody, have a lovely week. Have a blessed Sunday, and see you again next Sunday.